Mobile Tech Expo is an international auto reconditioning show that brings everything together under one venue. From paintless dent removal to detailing products, you'll find it's a very beneficial place to come learn, network, and more important, grow your business. My name is Mike Toledo, and I'm your host because as of now, you don't have a choice. So let's get started and let me show you what went on at Mobile Tech Expo 2012. First, I will get some random interviews. Some you might recognize from the past MTE videos, and others will be completely new and off the wall. Quite frankly, I love the unpredictable personalities, which make it even more fun and interesting, which I'm sure you'll feel the same too. All right, I'm over here with Freddie and Simon. What's up? <laughs> and uh, what a bunch of good, nice characters here, man. Talk about Mobile Tech Expo meeting a bunch of really nice people. Freddie, where are you come from? I am come from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Detroit. He's from Detroit. Detroit! <laughs> we are lovers, lovers, lovers. <laughs> no, 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 we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, once again, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Joel Van Wall. Uh, Joel, you came from Canada. How many of you guys got in? You got any more people besides last year in this event? Yeah, last year we were two, this year we we're four. There's four of us. You got four? Yeah. Wow, all right. We're bringing more weapons. <laughs> so how, how do you guys think you did? Uh, I think so far it's going good. I think so far it's going good, but you'll never know till the end, but it's looking good. This is the busiest event I've seen. Is it for you as well? Probably, yeah, absolutely. Have well, you been here since? Cars, there's more cars. There's a lot more dents this year also. Have you been here since 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 it started, like uh, every year? Uh, we got, uh, I think we missed one year. We only missed a year. Yeah. Well, congratulations as always, uh, Joel, whether you win or not, whether you win or not. All right, so, nice all right we'll talk to you later. Best of luck. All right, you guys. <laughs> if you haven't seen this guy around here before, Wade Hartley. Uh, got dense, right, on you. Hi! <laughs> Everybody thinks I'm crazy. Yes, sir. That's me. That's me. What a crazy guy, man. Wait, how's things going? You here? Again. It's good. <laughs> I got dent fixing and, and um, glass fixing and vinyl fixing. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> Now, did you did you carve out your chest this year yet? No, I didn't. See, there was a fire, and I had to go get my cat because I love her, and it burned all of my body hairs. It did. I got horrible burns. You want to see them? No, 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 thank you. No, no, and no, no rat brains either. So. No, I saw one. It crawled right across my lap. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, it's scary. No. no. <laughs> Huh? No, I, I ate it. There's lots of proteins and enzymes in the rat brains. You should eat one. Now you guys you eat one later. Uh, you you want to eat one? This is kind of kind of guys you guys see over here, but not not this one. This is a very unique guy, really cool guy. Besides his in character stuff, Wade. Thanks a lot, yeah. man. And, and uh, you having a good time? Yeah. Yeah. I like this place. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Switches. So, yeah. Wade, man, it's always fun to hang yeah, out with you. Absolutely, I'm man. great, and I want to see you more online, dude. Yeah. All right. So. I want to see you in person. <laughs> All right, I'm with uh, Kevin Halewood, the director of Mobile Tech Expo, who puts the whole thing on, who's actually responsible. What a packed house you have yes, this year! Absolutely, absolutely. We were about by noon yesterday. Actually, it was before noon. We we're at 2,500. By the end of the day, I think it was close to about 3,500, a little bit more. But it was so packed, uh, there were guys that were doing the dents, and they were laughing. They said that to get back out to go get a soda was taking like 10, 20 minutes to get through the hall. It was that many people. One guy says, I'm from New York, and he said it was worse than a New York subway at rush hour. He said probably about two or three times as bad. So it's been a great show. Great. Anything, anything different that you could, you could see why it was such a good turnout? I think, I think it was, we've got a lot of internationals. Um, from Europe, uh, Australia, there's a lot of guys from Australia, and I think that Orlando, being the hub that it is around the world and it's known that it does make a difference because they're able to fly one flight in. Even when we, we go into Clearwater, it's flying into Orlando and then a few hour drive to get over, whereas here, uh, they fly in, get off the plane, one flight, and they're, they're where they need to be. Wow, I mean, 
It, it's a great turnout. I, I really, I really appreciate coming here every year. It gets funner and funner. It does. It does. And I hope more and more people come, and we we get even more packs. So yeah, we this year we did a few new things. We did the car show that's going on right now. We have the blood mobile out there. So we're doing it for charity for the Larry King Cardiac Foundation, and that's done real well. Um, as most guys know, I had a heart attack in the Larry King Foundation. That's really why I'm here. I mean, I wouldn't be here without him. So um, we try to give back. And if we can help someone else that was in my predicament, that's what it's all about. And so luckily, um, guys are stepping up to the pump, and uh, it's working out for us. That's awesome, Kevin. Yeah. It's, it's always a pleasure to catch up with you. I know Thank you're you a busy guy. I, yeah, we, we made it. So yeah. we appreciate your time, okay. though. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, I'm here at PDR Finesse Tools. I'm with Mike Freeman. Mike, I understand you are taking over Ike's positions. You guys, between you and the other brother-in-law there, you guys going to take over and, and do this company. So what you guys uh, got in store? You know, uh, Finesse Tools, Mike, has, has been built on innovation and excellence. And so we obviously have been brought into business, you know, on that reputation and, and understanding that the core values of a company that build a company are the same core values that are going to continue to keep it at the top. Um, so we, you know, uh, we have plans to continue to innovate building new tools, um, whether it's uh, adjustable seven foot glue cutters, um, new hood stands, uh, continuing with the excellence of a tool like the number 36, which has been probably the best selling tool that we've ever seen, um, different variations of that. So same excellence, continued, uh, continued innovation, and lots of hard work. Wow, so let's take a look at this tool right here. This is. This is a huge tool. I mean, uh, now, tool. now, what would people be using this tool for? This tool works great at the back of, say, a minivan, um, where you can't work from the side because of the contour lines in the top. You can take care of the entire roof of a minivan from the rear. It's extendable up to seven feet. It works great along the edges over top of the rails. Um, it's also a good glue cutter. As you cut the glue, you can fix it in. So it's a combination glue cutter and whale tail. It's been a good seller for us here at MTE. Wow, that's definitely a unique tool. I haven't seen that tool. Uh, As always, you guys have some awesome, real quality tools. Tools. Anything new on the adjustable side? You know, we, we're going to continue to use the adjustable handle because the, the technology there is bulletproof. Um, been a great addition to the tools um, just because of the comfort, the ease of use. You know, we want to help tech stay in the game longer, and we feel like the adjustable handle is the tool to help them stay in the game longer. Um, the more comfortable they can be, the faster you can fix it in, the more money you make. And so that's kind of the premise behind the adjustable tool. We're fixing the adjustable handle on all of our new tools. We have a new fender tool, which we're completely sold out of right now. I'd love to introduce that on the video right now. I, I, so to honest, fantastic tool. You guys seem like you did really good because I couldn't even get the camera in here at certain points to get some stuff. And I knew by the time I get here because I couldn't get anybody's attention until now, but you guys would have you out of some stuff. It's been a good year for us. You know, we're very blessed. We're very grateful for the opportunity to be here. Um, you know, we want to we wanna help ticks stay in the game longer and make more money. And, um, you know, that's why they're all here to see what's new, see what's going to help them rise to the top and uh, play their A game. And so hopefully we can help them do that. Well, awesome. I appreciate you speaking with me, Mike. Continued success. Thanks for your time, Mike. Thank you. It always amazes me how PDR tools have changed throughout the years. It's also no surprise that PDR Finesse is doing well with attractive tools and designs. The PDR tools just keep getting better and better. I stop over at a newer tool company called Drew's Tools, and I think you might like what they are about to show. That's exactly what I said the other day. No? You said a longer tool used to be better, but this works for me. Yeah. Oh, man. That's exactly what you said. So, so what's going on, Drew? We got, we got the Drew's Tool yeah. girls over here. What's, what, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, we got Drew's Tools girls for the show. Aren't you a little cold? Just a little bit. Yeah. can deal with it. <laughs> well, Drew, I just want to wrap up. Uh, we're checking out all the tools around us. It's got to be one of the most innovative tools around here. So I uh, just want to let you know that what a great, great product you got. Man. Well, thank you very much. It's been a real popular item. Everybody loved it. So This is towards the end of the show. How do you think you did? Oh, it was a, good, it was a real good experience. I've got nothing to compare it to since it was my first time, but I, it was fun. It was a good time, and I think we had real good now, sales. I didn't have a lot of time to spend with Drew. But if you go to his website, DrewsTools.com, you'll find more information, especially about the RoboLight, as you see right here. All right, I'm with Carl Stuckey. Carl, obviously you have one of the most powerful cordless lights out on the market. Tell us more about it. Well, thank you for that compliment. Um, we think so. Um, 
basically we have two models, a 12 inch and 18 inch. Uh, both are cordless. We offer with a fog line and without a fog line, depending on how you like to use it. It comes standard with three strips. Uh, the battery packs will power two strips approximately six hours, you know, plus or minus, depending on how you use it. Um, <clears throat> our strips go almost all the way to the end. So on a 12 inch fixture, you actually get almost over 11 inches of light. And on an 18, you get over 17 inches of light. Now, can they change the different colors if they want can, pre, when they pre order it or order it? Um, that's subject to availability. If we don't have the housings already pre made and we have some extra housings, um, you can special order it. You just have to email me when you place your order and tell me or e call me ahead of time and ask me if it's available. And we can do special configurations. We are offering a new configuration for the fog lights. Uh, if you're a fog line user, instead of three strips, we're going to give you four strips so you can make your light even brighter if you're in high ambient light conditions, like outside or something, and you need a little extra light on that, on that line. What, what colors do they come in? Uh, we have cool white and warm white right now. We don't offer any other. How the sequence go? It's standard. It comes warm white on the outside and a cool white in the middle, and you can, off, you can order it any other way as long as it's available. Now, for me, you sent me, when I did a review on your light, which was an excellent, and we got a lot of great res positive response out of it, and I'm sure you said you did too, but um, you, you actually switched, the, switched that for me because I use lines. Right. We, um, we've had a handful of guys that want the cool white on the outside and warm white in the center, so we, we're able to do that as well. Like I said, as long as we have the housing available Correct. to do that for you. And, uh, you know, what's the pricing on these? And like, how, Well, let's start with how much, how much do they weigh? Um, approximately a couple pounds, okay. you know, two or three pounds, probably maybe three pounds for the 18 inch light. Now the longer one's considered for the hail and the smaller ones like the average door dinger? Right. Um, and it kind of depends. Most, most hail guys light 18 inch because you get a little six inches more light. You can um, use it for cross checking side panels, rails without moving your big light around. Uh, the door dingers love the 12 inch, you get a little extra battery life. Uh, you can go almost all week long using it on your route without charging it. Great. And then where do they run? The 18-inch the is $350, and the 12-inch is $300. And it comes with battery and charger. And where can they find them at? DentSpecialistInternational.com. Perfect. Well, Carl, I think that sums it up. I appreciate your time. Mike, Best of luck. You're welcome. Appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. Take care. All right, with Sal from uh, Dent Cure Tools. Sal, you've been here a lot of years and stuff like that. You got some, obviously, some new tools. Okay, let's uh, tell me about it. Uh, what we've got this year is we've got some new 25-degree uh, whale tails. Uh, great for sliding in and out of braces. The longer ones, better for the doors coming up underneath. So you got more of an angle tool. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Okay. We used to make them years back. Got back into making them. Well, why'd you quit? Uh, labor intensive. Gotcha. Now we've got a better process to make them, and uh, okay. they're coming out right, cool. much, much nicer. What nice. else you got? We've got our uh, Sure Shot tool. It's a hand pick for uh, you know when you can't get a uh, tool in in the proper location, or you want to get up close. It's a little different than last year's, though, right? Yeah, it fits in the hand a little better than the ding ring. Um, ding ring's still good for using on the uh, glue pulling. Uh, you can prop it up for that. Let's see that, sir. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's good. That's okay. Nice. Well, what else you got? Man? We've got our new fulcrum tool. If you're up in a truck bed and you have no leverage, you'll just stick this up in there. Whatever gap you need, whatever angle, this will swivel to wherever you need it, up and down the shaft. And you just press out this way, or if you want to change your tips, you can press out this way and just use it that way, and you'll get uh, that drive. Gotcha. Large amount of drive. So it, it, you, you, this will fit on any tool, then, basically? Yes, yeah, so we sell it in a kit. It comes in three different sizes, three-eighths, half-inch, and a five-eighths diameter. Cool. Well, that's awesome, man. I, I know we have, I've checked out some of your other stuff. We've got some other shots of that. So yeah. really cool, Sal. Always great to talk to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Sal. Thank you. And I'm here with Bryce Rockhill with Dent Force. And Bryce, I see you got some really cool, interesting uh, hammers. Are they they're finishing hammers, or can you give me some more information? Uh, everybody calls them blending hammers, but um, it's just a hammer with a polished face on one side, and a, the other side you can put any tip you want from Dentcraft, Ultra, whatever you'd use. And uh, it's more or less what they'd say a blending hammer. Now this one's a 
This one's carbon fiber, is that correct? This, this one? one model I make is carbon fiber. It doesn't adjust, so it's more like an everyday hammer alt, you know, that uh, more Dording guys would use. It, it, and I use carbon fiber instead of wood because I think it would be a lot more durable. Plus, it adds to the down here being lighter weight, but up here when you use it more, that it's more top heavy. And um, came up with that model. We also have another model over here where this one extends. And then basically, the thing behind that was to uh, get rid of the three-piece set for a lot of guys that travel. For, that use um, all the different various companies that use the three-piece set. The um, that's really interesting. So they can basically extend it to whatever length they want, and, and it depends on how far it is or how, how they want to adjust it. It used for a lot more roofs and side panels. Instead of leaning way out and trying to tap way out, you can just sit back and then adjust it and let the hammerhead do the actual weight itself, and it locks into place. Wow, really interesting. I really like that. And then you guys got another one, right? We have a. a Oh, this the aluminum. Model. It's different. It's different materials a little bit, and it's a little bit cheaper. It's more like the uh, one we have with the deluxe model, I guess you'd say, and one's the uh, economy model. And same thing, it locks in place, but this one's on a cam system, so it either locks and then it comes loose, locks and comes loose. But some guys like this because it adjusts a little bit faster. You ain't got to turn it a lot more, so it adjusts and, and is loose. But the difference in materials to build each kind is uh, the difference in price, basically. Cool. As well. well, now what's the price going from the carbon fiber one to the the, sec the other one? The carbon fiber one is uh, 125, and it's because it's a fixed hammer. Other comparable companies that sell anything like Dent Gear, such as, it's about the same price as them. It's a fixed hammer. Same thing for what they sell as theirs. The difference in mine is it has a polished face like theirs, but the other side of the hammer you can use to put whatever tip you like. Theirs, the back side is just, you know, you can't really add anything else to it. Gotcha. Um, same thing with this one. This is the economy model. This one's 125. Um, same thing, difference in the amount of steel that's used here. This is a softer stainless steel, and the other, uh, the uh, deluxe model is. Um, like a hardened steel, so it's a little bit more just in my production costs. And this one, you can't, you can't take off. This one. There's a couple models that we made of these just to see how they test. Some guys didn't want to screw anything in. They just like this sharp, flat metal side. And then some guys, so we made some where they're, they're fixed, where you could just do that real quick, and they didn't have to want to switch so many tips. Some guys just like that the way it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then so some, yeah, are fixed, some aren't. Well, cool. And the, the other the, tele, the other telescoping one right here is about 150, then, right? And this one is 150. And the reason why is because the the heat treated stainless steel on this one is 17.4. And after talking to Ike at PDR Finesse, he told me this this is probably the best steel possible to use. It won't ever divot or anything like that, and it'll keep its polished face a lot longer than every one of them else. Um, I, I originally made these two years ago, and I'm still using the original one I made two years later. That's how durable they are. Wow, great. Well, Bryce, thanks a lot for taking your time to show us your, your cool new finishing hammer, blending hammers. Um, I really think they're cool, and I think I'll end up picking one up myself. So, no uh, problem. Thank you, Thanks Mike. a lot, Bryce. See you around. Uh, Jeff Herman from Top Tech Finder. So tell me, what's it about? Top Tech Finder is a website that brings together techs, PDR techs, and jobs. So it's an online marketplace, kind of like one part eBay and one part Angie List. The idea is that techs can create a free profile on the site, absolutely no obligation whatsoever, and the profile is like a resume for them. Once they're on the site, they can do a search, like a Google search for jobs, and the body shops can do the same kind of thing. They create their own profile, they post a jobs for free. Once they post a job, they can do a search for techs. So it's a free way for um, techs to find jobs. And the way I make my money is I take a referral fee from the body shop of 10%, which I build directly to the body shop. So unlike a broker, I'm kind of the anti-broker, I don't hold the tech's money. That relationship the tech has with the body shop stays there. They do billing and invoicing, they do their own estimations, and they back up their own work. So one of the things that makes it different, though, is that I have a reputational, essentially, monitoring going on. So as a tech does jobs, the body shop has an opportunity to review the tech based on the quality of their work, the speed of the work, and, um, and uh, their level of professionalism. And the tech has ability to rate the body shop as well on professionalism and do they pay on time and are they easy to work with. So the point here is that through time, a tech's reputation builds up online Right, every all the jobs that they are, have done are shown there, and so other body shops can kind of see these guys and see the quality of their work, right? And the same thing is true of the body shops. The next time a body shop's trying to do uh, work with techs, um, excuse me, the next time tech trying to work with body shops, the tech can check out that body shop and see what previous tech said about them, right? So the idea is you can lift the best techs and the best body shops up, and the guys that maybe shouldn't be in the business, the hacks and the other folks down. Well, basically that'll help filter out who's who. 
Exactly, that's the idea, right? I mean, one of the things about the PDR industry seems to be that there's not a lot of keeping of reputation, right? People go from area to area, you don't know who's showing up. If you're a body shop, who's lining up at your door, right? If you're a tech showing up, you don't know anything about the body shop. And so a lot of shenanigans can happen when that stuff's going on, right? That shouldn't be there, and I think we can get rid of that stuff. Now that's an interesting idea, and how can they find more information about that? They can just go to www.toptechfinder.com. All the benefits of working there, uh, both for techs and shops, are online, and you also have the opportunity to see how it works. Um, another important thing to note, though, is that we only take 10%, as I mentioned, right? So that's about half of what a typical broker would take. So even if a body shop was taking a 30% facility fee, we take 10, the tech is making 60% on the deal, which is a pretty nice percentage. Well, awesome, Jeff. That sounds very interesting. I hope everyone goes checks out your uh, site. Thank and, you. And um, thanks for the interview. Absolutely. Remember that part earlier in the video I was talking about the personalities of people? You never know what you're really going to run into or whatnot. Well, Chris Mettler is one of them. He's an awesome, great guy. Check out this interview. But meanwhile, when you get a chance, check out his website, inventure.com. You really like it. He's a longtime veteran in the PDR tool industry. But check it out. I think you're going to get a kick out of his interview. Hi, right. world. I'm with Chris. From Adventure Tools, how are you doing, man? I'm doing very good. This is a wonderful show. We love it here in Florida. Don't ever go to Texas again. <laughs> now, how long? You, you've been here pretty much every every show, is that correct? I've been to every show. Uh, Kevin and I are the only ones that have been to every single show. <laughs> Kevin. Well, yeah, I, Kevin Hale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you guys, you got some new stuff going on. Tell, tell us about it. Well, we try and improve everything that we can, and uh, uh, unfortunately, we've sold out of some of our newer things. We have uh, tap downs, I call them drivers, made out of titanium, and it's just been a real hit. And uh, they're very nice and lightweight, and, and uh, all the dent guys like to have something a little bit different. So. Well, you always got the cool knickknacks that everybody can pick up because you know everybody's got this, and then you got some cool tools. I see some some nice LED light systems. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we like it. Uh, Chris, where can they find your information and products if they want to go online? PDR Painless Dent Repair at InventureInc.com. Okay, and that's your email, but what's your website? InventureInc.com. Perfect. www www and all that Inventure Inc. Dot com. Perfect. Chris, I appreciate your time. It's always a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Unfortunately, I couldn't interview everybody. I tried interviewing Bill Hewitt from Pro PDR Solutions, but he was way too busy, as you can tell. And I totally understand. He has some great new products, including the latest light stands, mini lights, hail bars, and even more. You can find him at ProPDRSolutions.com. I also was trying to catch up with Ray at PDRGear.com. He has a lot of glue pulling products, including a sleek slide hammer you see here. I'm planning to get a Skype or FaceTime interview in the future with Ray and more other PDR tool companies as well. You can find him online at PDRgear.com. There you'll be able to find his information and more products he offers online. In case you haven't seen the interview with Jordan Fisher, who has a very cool tool cart that collapses and the interesting interview with Dentcraft, please visit our YouTube page, youtube.com slash denttime, where you can watch the full interviews. Detailing products and training seemed a busy business here at MTE. Plenty of exhibits and see for yourself demonstrations. I also want to mention lots of other vendors who offer anything from mobile tent spray booths like Fast Shelter, bump repair, and spray products like this interview. All right, I'm with uh, Bill from Lexair Products. Bill, what exactly does your company do? We've been manufacturing HBLP spray equipment for 31 years up, out of, up in Massachusetts. Great, and what's this, what's this system do? This system here is what we call our combo. It's both a sprayer and a dryer. When you get through spraying the panel on the car or the interior or shampooing, it converts over to a dryer. Wow. Yeah. Wow, what's this system run? It runs 1375 for the complete system. That's sprayer and dryer. Well, and what's your main target? I mean, who, who actually uses your, um, your stuff? Yeah, auto body shops use it, uh, mobile people, the painters. Anybody and a lot of interior guys buy just the straight dryer. We sell it also as a dryer without the spray equipment. Well, I, I see. I see some some mobile bumper guys using this too. Y yes, they do. 
And on our literature, you'll see it shows the configuration for drying and spraying both. That's awesome, Bill. And where yeah. can they find more uh, information on your products? Well, come right here to booth 201. <laughs> or we're on, uh, they can go online, Lexia.com. Lexia.com. Yeah. Good, great deal. So that's what we wanted to know. Great. Bill, we appreciate your time. My Thank pleasure. you very much. All right, we're here with Jeff over here at Mirka. What's you guys' specialty? Well, we're actually an abrasive manufacturer, a full line. We make abrasives from 80 up to 3,000 grit or even 4,000 grit if it's needed. Here today, we're actually showing a new product on the market. It's an electric DA that'll run very similar to an air DA. Wow. And I have, I actually own an auto, an, a mobile um, bumper repair company, so this is pretty interesting. Absolutely. Yeah, we've actually been demoing this, this tool with the new abrasive on the market uh, called AutoNet, which is actually an aluminum oxide coated on a nylon backing, so it's you know very free-flowing and works extremely well on plastic bumpers. A lot of these bumpers have a tendency to fuzz up quite a bit, yeah. and this actually cuts a lot cooler on the bumpers and keeps the fuzz down, so it works really well. Wow, so really cool. This is really innovative. I like that. That's really cool. So where can they find uh, your information in your products? At? Actually, you can go onto our website, www.merca.com, and uh, you can find all the information there. Jeff, I appreciate your time, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. you I'm with Delta Kits. Corey, Corey, you guys all have some really consistent products. You're one of the leaders, obviously. I would say one of the best leaders in the uh, windshield repair technology. Tell us more about your products. Uh, well, what we got here, we got our B250, which is our new bridge um, that we have out. Uh, it's a stainless steel flip lever. So we just listened to the technicians on the changes that they wanted, and we made those changes for that bridge and we just have it here and we have our resin and we also have acid free resin for our technicians now because that's the option that they're looking for for acid free resin and um, we have our headlight restoration supplies also out and we have a new coating our infinity 4.1 which is a four part coating that will to coat and protect those headlights oh, that's that is super good i mean I, I see your delta kits right here give us some more you said you, you did some changes on it. Yeah, this is a new B250 bridge. It's all stainless steel. And if you see here, it can swivel around here. And it can adjust and go around the, all the way around on the windshield. So you can find the tech, you can find the damage, and you're pretty good there. So that's the changes here, making this lever all stainless steel. That's awesome, Corey. And Corey, where can they find your products? Uh, DeltaKits.com is where they can find us. Also on our windshield repair forum, windshieldreferral.com. Do the, is there any uh, training videos that you have online there? Or? Online, we have over 50 informational videos on our website that they can see. And uh, we also have uh, the world's largest windshield repair forum at windshieldrepairforum.com. And they can also talk to technicians from across the world. Awesome, Corey. I appreciate your, your help and your information. Thank you. Thank you. I stopped and talked to John Willis from National Dent Works, who was helping coordinate the Dent Olympics. I would let you hear the audio, but it was pretty bad, so rather than torture your ears with bad sound, I will pass on the message, it's the most busiest Dent Olympics ever. Next, we'll speak to Andrew Kinsley, who's actually another coordinator for the Dent Olympics. Hopefully the audio will be better this time. From what I'm told, Terry Siegel it took a vacation this year and not really into this, into this uh, event. Andrew Kinsley took over. How's it going, Andrew? It's going very well. We've had a lot of good competition, and uh, it's going to be a hard decision. So. How many techs do you guys have? I thought it was like 100. Is that true? Or how many? We, are, how I think many? we're sh right around 100. I think we got 105 dents right now. So it can be as many as 105 right now. And out of those 105, how many, how many people actually, how many individual techs are actually doing it? Um, I would say, I don't really know how many's doubled up. There's uh, probably maybe 15 doubled up. Really? Yeah. So you got, so got like 75 techs at least, I mean, minimum. I yeah. mean, so yeah. that, okay. that's, that's crazy. So, and how many cars, how long did it take you? When did you start doing it? Because I know this was more, more dense than you guys expected. When did you start? Yeah, we started on Wednesday at about 2 o'clock and went all the afternoon. And then every day we've run till 5 or 6 o'clock. That's great. So you actually had somebody, you actually got started a day early, technically, just to, so you can finish through this. Yeah, and next year we also devised a plan where we're going to set a time when they call because they've been calling and just tell them to come when they can. But next year they're going to schedule a time and we're going to try to fit 150, up to 150 in the same time period. Wow, wow. 
really great venue. People come from all around the world to, yeah. to do this. Even Kenji, we just talked to Kenji from Japan. I know there's guys from Ireland, Canada, Holland. Germany. Uh, the guys, they're not technically Italy. not. Yeah, Italy. So, what a great competition, Andrew. Uh, thanks for putting awesome. it on and, and doing that. And uh, we'll be here to check out the results. All right, sounds good. I catch up with Keith Constantino, who's actually one of the contestants in the PDR Dent Olympics. It's a very interesting interview, and I really think you'll like what he has to say about what went on. Keith from Bullseye Dent. Keith, how is it, man? Oh, it's great. Uh, it's, there are a lot of new tools we've seen. A lot of people. It's kind of like uh, sardines packed in here, but it's fun. We're meeting a lot of guys you see online. You talk to them, but now you get to meet them in person. Uh, I was able to compete, do a couple of dance in the Olympics. That's a lot of fun. It's a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, but uh, you really get to see what everybody's all about, what you're made of yeah. under pressure. Well, what, what do you think is the most challenging part about this? I've heard a lot of guys say it's the pressure of everybody watching you. I got a lot of years in, so that doesn't bother me. Anybody can watch me, but I think the hardest part is the pressure you put on yourself trying to trying to win. You're not in this unless you're trying to win it. Yeah, you know what? That's, that's a very good point. I think people totally, uh, you know, misunderestimate that. Yeah. yeah, they think you just, you know, show up and do a den, and there's some some top, top, I mean, it, these are the guys, the best guys in the world are coming here, and they, they think they're going to win. That's the only reason you're in this competition. Yeah, so. Exactly. Now, is this your first year? It's my second year. Second year. Yeah. First year in here or second year doing it? Too? Both. Second year at the show, second year on the cars. Wow, wow. Good job. Good job. I, I wish you the best of luck on that. I know it's, it's very tough, you know, and it comes down to obviously finishing because everyone's at the same, practically at the same point, except that little last 2%. It's not the 5%. It's the 2%. It, it, it's, it's a whisper. I mean, it, with a couple exceptions, any dent on these cars is a good repair uh, back home in your retail market. But when you got everybody else standing 40 feet back, picking the last little thing out, say, I think I see something. You're out. You're not the winner. <laughs> it's tough. Well, that's why I wanted to get some interviews about people who've been in the competition so they can share it from their point of view. And that's exactly what everyone's kind of saying. Everyone's saying the same thing, but it's just maybe this little thing that's that, that yeah. If you, pressure I'd say if you want to, if you want to win, you better be trying to glass every dent you do at home. Yeah. You can't be turning it on and off, saying this is a wholesale car. I'm gonna get it close. You, you yeah, did you take advantage of uh, entering twice or just once? I did. Last year I was the last guy, the very last dent they had available. I got one shot, which I personally think is the way it should roll. That's just like the real world. You show up to a guy's house, he's got one dent, you don't get a second chance to glass it, right? You got one shot. So I got one dent last year. I have middle of the pack, I think, but 15th I got last year. But this year, the rules too, everybody's getting two. I took two as well. And uh, I, honestly, I probably did better on my first than I did on my second, because they're not identical dents. They're very, very close, as close as you could possibly get them, but they're not identical. And they're different locations. So. One dent, I think, is what they're going to next year, I heard. I don't know if that's for sure, but uh, I think that's better. It's more, uh, more a test of a guy's real-world ability. You get one shot, one dent. Yeah, because you don't get to pick your customer's dents. No, you don't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what I can do on this one. If it doesn't turn out great. We'll Call me only if it's in the middle of the panel, a right. size dent, no pits. Right, no, so I, I, did, do, I did too because I look at it like a, it's a game. It's not really a contest of my dent fixing abilities, it's a game. And I'm gonna play by the rules if I wanna win, and the, and the rules are you do two if you want. So I did two. That's awesome. Keith, I really appreciate you really explaining how, what hey. your experience was. It means a lot, I'm sure everybody appreciates, appreciates your explanation. I, and I would say, if, if you're even thinking about competing, if you're, if you're halfway decent, I mean, if you're starting out, maybe you wanna put a couple years in because you don't wanna embarrass yourself, but if you're halfway decent or you, you think you're one of the best guys in your area, come out and compete because you're gonna see some guys that these are the best guys. I mean, they're coming from all over the world to be here. Well, and beyond that, it's it's getting to know everybody as well, and really building a strong community. Because you think, oh, you, you're really nervous about seeing someone else and maybe bumping into someone's egos. I, it seems like everyone's egos just dropped out of here. No, they're, once you're in person, uh, everybody's pretty cool, yeah. and it it makes you a better tech all day long. Yeah. When you go here, you try to compete on these cars, and you do a good repair, but a couple of guys are better. You go home. And you're working hard. You're cranking. You're trying to get everything to the next level. I mean, I know I'm doing stuff this year and last year that I wouldn't have touched four or five years ago out of body shop. Well, Keith, again, I really appreciate it. It was pleasure. great talking to you. Hey, thanks, All right. Mike. Talk to you soon. Okay. okay. For more information on the Dent Olympics, you should check out my past video, specifically talking about the rules and, and how, the, how it all works. But meanwhile, we, we see a lot of different techniques with the paintless dent repair. 
Um, obviously, uh, a lot of really good good competition. And, and right here, as we are looking at um, Sal, he was the third, third place winner of last year. So, and like I said, with PDR, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And definitely Sal has his own ways. So, uh, you know, check a little bit out. Look at his little techniques. It's pretty dang darn interesting. I hope you guys can all make it out to the Dental Olympics next year. It's going to be a really packed house and probably really much more busier as well. I'm here with some guys that came from a little bit further away. Some were very local in my area, and some guys who've been here for the first time and doing the Dental Olympics. Milton, you came all the way from Puerto Rico. Why do you think, why did you come here, and what way did you come here? Well, one of the reasons I came here is because um, your video is on YouTube. So thanks to you, I, I know about the Mobile Tech Expo, and um, it's a great experience. If you're not updated on tools and the new stuff coming out, like I am, I live on the island in the Caribbean, so I don't have a lot of people to like network with. So I have to definitely come here, and thanks to you, I'm here and I'm able to like buy new products for my, for my shop and my company. So well, I appreciate that, and I think um, obviously I think it's it's well worth it. And and also I did the veil training, you know, and I also passed, so that's a good thing. <laughs> that's I'm good. Be, uh, that's a little far from Puerto Rico. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I'm going to be the first one in Puerto Rico with it, so I'm, I'm stoked with it, so, you know. Congratulations, yeah. congratulations. Thanks, okay, so you guys did the Dental Olympics, all right? What was the most challenging thing about the Dental Olympics for you? The most challenging thing was the last 5% of that dent. <laughs> the last 5%. <laughs> Even when you're 17-yard beat our tech, right? Yes, sir. 17 years, man, and I'm going to tell you what, it was not a lot job. It was definitely better than retail. <laughs> Well, I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you got up here. It's, you got to bring it, or it, or it's not gonna. You're not gonna even place. But it's so nice to see a bunch of guys out here that really you get along. They get along and love the art of paintless dent repair. That's right. It's it's you know once you get in, you think it's com competition, but once you really start understanding it, it it really is. It brings it steps up the the standard and everything. Really nice. Yeah, it shows almost like a family, almost yeah, like a family out here. It is. And drop the egos because you can come here and think you're the baddest tech in the world. You come over here, you know what? I, you know maybe I, maybe I'm not as you know, but it just kind of kind of puts you down and it kind of brings you back up and helps you out. Yeah. Well, hey, look, I just want to say thank you for everything you do for the PDR network and uh, because of you, we're down here. You know, uh, if we wouldn't have seen your clips with your interviews with Kevin and everybody else, man, we wouldn't have known so much about this place. But uh, thank you for everything you do, dude. I, I appreciate it. You didn't have to say that. How was it for you? Uh, first year doing this, uh, great experience. Meet a bunch of new people from around the world. Uh, worth the trip, definitely. So next year, coming again. So Now, T, yep. you're locally from San Diego, right in my neck of the woods. Yep. Just, is this your first time or second time? My second, my second year. Um, this year, it's way better than well, last year. Right, yeah, you and I, we were out in the Texas. <laughs> yeah, there. Corpus Christi. Um, more, more, you know, dent guys here. Um, overall, I say was this year was better than last year. How do you think you did in the dental? Limit? I think I did great. Um, he he said he placed me on the top top list, so we'll see. Congratulations. Um, yeah. Um, good. Ho hopefully, um, but I've seen some other you know guys and they're pretty good as well. So. Well, thanks, T. You're a very nice guy, man. Yeah, nice meeting you guys. I really appreciate you guys this time. All right. Thanks and good luck to you guys in the dental Olympics. Milton, good luck. All right. Thanks. Thank you guys. Well, it's time for the results as the crowd anxiously awaits. The judges make their last rounds to determine the order of the winners. I can tell you this was a very busy competition. The staff on the Dental Olympics did a fantastic job making sure it went very smooth. Okay, first place for glue pull is Shane Patch. Yeah. Second place is Simon Well. Simon? Simon! Simon! Who's yeah. the second place? Third place for the Blue Pole is Luke Price. Yeah. Yeah. 
first place for the 2012 Den Olympics is J Jacob Helm. Jacob, you have Okay, second place for the 2012 Bowl Expo. Mark Turkis. Mark, come on up. <laughs> Third place for the 2012 Golden State Expo Den Olympics is Simon Roth. Russian vodka, I guess, is what it is for him. But it's Oleg, come on up. Yeah. Yeah. 